I'm supposed to say a happy new year. year. First time I've seen many of you this year, and we're certainly glad to see you out, and good to see you out in the house of the Lord on the first Sunday of 2024. Wow. Well, we appreciate you being here. We got some visitors with us this morning, first time visitors. We got Neil. Neil, good to have you with us. Thank you for being out this morning. And then we have Archie over here. Archie, a first-time visitor. We appreciate you being out, Archie. And then we got several second-time visitors. And man, those second-time visitors I really like. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> They'll come back the second time. And we appreciate you being here. And then we got Chris and Karen are finally back from up in the northern country. And good to see y'all out this morning. Glad you made it back safe and sound. But good to see everybody, good to see everybody out this morning. I tell you what, it's always exciting to be in the Lord's house to start the year out and uh, just to get everything, everything. Somebody, some, well, somebody's not happy to be here, are they? I'm just going to squall on this and yay, and, and just say I'm happy to be here, amen? But uh, we're going to get into the service. Don't forget tonight, they're going to be doing choir practice tonight at 5 o'clock. Is that right, Miss Jean? Choir practice tonight at 5 o'clock. So don't forget that. And we've got a bunch of announcements to give you here just in a minute. But again, so good to see you out. Brother Bill, if you'd come, let's stand and do our pledges. And then we'll do our stand and we'll open up in our song. Are we ready? The American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. To our Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and I will hide his word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Let's remain standing, and we're going to sing, When We All Get to Heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy. Shock the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Clouds will over spread the sky. 
But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Come on down. I thought Darlene was coming with him. How's everybody doing? My baby. Everybody good? Well, let me say Happy New Year's to you guys. Happy New Year. He really wasn't there. I like that. Let me, come here a minute. Let me touch that hair. Ooh, I like that. I like that. You guys are looking sharp today, man. Let me feel your minds up there like that. You guys all right? It, did anybody make any New Year's resolutions? We know what that is. What, what, is, what is a New Year's resolution? What is a resolution? <laughs> what, what if somebody was speaking when you were speaking? I'm sorry. Well, I can't hear you. Something, to, yeah, something that we decide we're going to keep for the new year. I like what I like what Bill said. A, a resolution, something we make it we don't keep. You know, I was in education. Anybody remember that? Remember me being in education? And you know what they started doing? You remember this, John Broden? Some of you, it's a little bit older. They start all the way down in in grade school and elementary school want you to decide what you're going to be when you grow up. And I thought, I don't even know what I'm going to be when I grow up. How are you going to decide in, in, in elementary school where you're going to be? But you know what? They want you to start making choices, so you start leaning that way. And I thought, you know what? On the first Sunday of the new year, 2024, you know what I'd like to say to you? I wish you'd start making choices and decisions about leaning the right way for Jesus. Amen. That's what you need to decide to do. You know, it, it's great to decide what you're going to be when you grow up. You might want to be this. You might want to be that. But the greatest thing you could ever be would be to be a Christian Amen. and serve the Lord. So you know what? I thought, you know what? That's what children's church is all about, starting you out young, telling you about Jesus. Does school tell you about Jesus? No, they don't. Do ball games tell you about Jesus? No. Shopping centers tell you about Jesus? No. No. So we at the church, we need to tell you about Jesus. So I'm going to encourage you make a resolution, and I'm not big on resolution, but make this decision. I'm going to learn more about Jesus in 24 than I ever have in my life. That shouldn't be hard. Y'all young, you don't have a lot of stuff in there. So we'll be able to cram some Jesus down in you. Amen. Now, you look at these old folks, they're, already full, they're, they're full of everything. And it's hard to get Jesus in them. But you guys ought to have a little bit of room left to get Jesus in you in 24. Amen? Amen. Have a great day, guys. We love you. If you can, let's stand one more time. And uh, we're going to sing... Victory in Jesus. Amen. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard 
Sing about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and hear my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion, he was built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Jean. Thank you, Miss Ruth. That sounds mighty good to me. We appreciate you being out again and say welcome to you one more time. We'll probably say that four or five times to you, but we want you to feel welcome. Amen. Amen. And then Justin come in, and he come in at, at, at the end. I guess say welcome to him. Justin, first time. Good to have you out, sir. We appreciate you being with us. Now, I won't say who, but some of, my, some of our second-time visitors wanted to know, so did they hear the best sermon last Sunday? And I said, absolutely. The major knocked it out last Sunday, didn't he? And uh, so don't look for anything any better than that today. But uh, we'll, we'll give you something. Amen? Amen? Got a couple announcements. Don't forget revival. Man, it's just about time for revival. Amen. And uh, we're excited about that. Two weeks. We've got some flyers out back. We've got some big ones. We've got some small ones. So please grab some, put them up, put them in your vehicle, put them in your store, put them in a business, do something, give them to somebody, take pictures of them, put them on Facebook, whatever. But let's get the word out, okay? And, man, I'm excited about Randy and Mary being here. Then we got some more Bible reading plans. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask because it's the first Sunday of the year, day number seven. How many people are up on reading the Bible? They still good? Woo, mercy. His hands are not as high as they were Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> a resolution, something we make it, we don't what? Okay. I had a lot of people say, I'm going to read the Bible through in 2024. You've still got time, so we got some Bible reading plans out on the table. This will help you every day. And you say, well, I'm, you know, I've already missed seven days. Well, you got like 358 more to go. Read a little bit extra every day, and you'll be caught up before you know it. And that'll give you an Old Testament, New Testament, Psalm, and Proverbs every day, and you'll be caught up. Really, you ought to try to read the Bible through every day. Amen? I'm, <laughs> read the Bible through every day. <laughs> All right, anybody that's read the Bible through every day, stand up, and we'll recognize you. But you ought to try to read the Bible through and read, get in the Bible every day. Amen? And then don't forget that uh, 
Our annual business meeting will be next Sunday night after church. That's a, we have an annual business meeting, and that'll be next Sunday night after church. And then uh, tonight we're starting back on our Revelation series. Uh, we'll be finishing out Revelation 11 and maybe be in Revelation 12, and I'm excited about getting back into that. We, take, we took uh, December off to preach on Christmas and, and things like that, but uh, we'll be back tonight on that. And then Tuesday morning truths. We'll be starting back on Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, so I hope you'll make plans to be here. Are we still meeting Tuesday morning? We're going to be great meeting with Don and Jerry and them on Tuesday morning, so we'll be doing that. And then don't forget Wednesday evening service at 7. I started a brand new series Wednesday night on the book of Ruth. And, boy, I love the book of Ruth. And uh, I didn't get very far. No, only four chapters, 85 verses. How many people have read the book of Ruth since Wednesday night? Wow, maybe I've maybe I got a good group of people here after all. Man, I tell you what, so uh, just keep reading it. I'll eventually get caught up with you, amen? But uh, come out on Wednesday night and be there. We're supposed to have a young adult get together on Saturday, the 13th. We we'll want to postpone that until after the revival. We've got so much going on, and we don't have that planned up, so uh, we'll be doing that after the revival. So anyhow, just keep all that in your, in your hearts and minds, and we've got a lot going on. We don't have any anniversaries this week. We don't have any birthdays that I know of. I'm sure somebody had one, but we just don't know of them. Pray for little Logan Brown. Logan's got pneumonia, and uh, he's supposed to be having his surgery on, what is it, 31st? of January, so I want to pray for Logan, and uh, appreciate appreciate uh, uh, Anthony being out this morning, my buddy back there, thank you for being here this morning, Anthony, but pray for Logan, is Mia sick too? Um, she has a cough. Mia's got a cough, watch that, you got kids, it just goes from one to the other, doesn't it, man, just, and then starts over again, and then pray for Ronnie Sharpton, where's Ronnie, where's Ronnie, he's over on that side this morning, Ronnie's got surgery scheduled on the 23rd, correct, so pray for Ronnie, and then Dennis Shires, Dennis, is, is he inside or outside, Dennis out back, pray for Dennis, he goes tomorrow for x-rays and an MRI, uh, it's tomorrow, right, Joanne, and then Evelyn is sick, you're filling in in Evelyn's seat there, there's no wonder I couldn't find you, Joanne, Evelyn's sick this morning, not feeling good, uh, Roxanne's mom is not feeling good. She's 96.5. Can you believe that? She's got a right not to feel good. Amen? Uh, it, I, I bet if we took a vote, most of us got something wrong with us. So if we were 96.5, we'd probably not feel good either. Sherry Higginbotham's daughter's grandpa passed away. Did you know that, Sharon? And uh, pray, pray for that family. She's not here this morning. And then if you missed Wednesday night, you know, the major had surgery been three weeks ago. And uh, he, he, everything was going well until this week, and he ended up with a blood clot back in his leg again. So that's... The second time he's had surgery, the second time he's had a blood clot, they've got him on medication. Just pray that that'll go well and we won't have any, any complications from that, and that'll dissolve and everything else. But again, remember all those on the prayer list. Prayer list going out this week. I'm assuming the prayer list hadn't been out in a couple of weeks through the holidays, so we'll be getting that back out this week, so keep an eye on that. But again, it's so good to see you out. I'm excited about the new year. Are you? I, I, I put on there, I don't know if you remember, I hate to bring it up. Remember the last sermon I preached on, on 2023, Are You Ready for 2024? Woo, it was a barn burner. But anyhow, somebody sent me a message that said, I wasn't ready for 2023. <laughs> and I thought, you know, there's probably a good sermon in that right there. So I hope we're ready for 2024. It's here, and we're going to do the best we can with it. Amen? Amen. Good to see you out. Major, if you would come. By the way, we made the announcement last week. Major is the new assistant pastor of Freedom Baptist Church. And uh, we appreciate him. What a blessing that is. God bless you, my buddy. Thank you, brother. Amen. Get the microphone here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Great to see everybody out this morning. Great to see our, uh, our first-time uh, visitors and uh, some of our second-time visitors, everybody out, and all of our brothers and sisters online. Just love all of y'all and appreciate everybody coming out. Looking forward to hearing from the Lord today. Amen. But uh, I want to thank all y'all for your prayers. Um, you know, it, uh, it's just one of those things, right? It's like I was talking to Brother Rob about it. I mean, we can't uh, always understand it, but we know that God has a purpose for everything that he allows to happen in our lives. So we're just going to roll with it and uh, keep our head up high and uh, keep on rolling on doing what we're doing. Amen? Amen? 
But um, let's say, anybody got any unspoken requests about uplifting their hand? Anybody? God bless all those hands for unspoken requests. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with thankful hearts here, Lord, on this uh, first Sunday in uh, 2024. Wow. Just uh, a blessing, Father, to, uh, to be out in your house this morning. Lord, help us. Uh, we just thank you, Lord, for, for another day of life. Lord, help us to take it and use it to serve you with it, Lord. And I uh, want to pray for the service this morning, Lord. Thank you for the singing that we've heard, Lord. Uh, with uh, Miss Jean and uh, Miss Ruth playing there, Lord, thank you for them. Lord, I want to pray for the singing coming up with Brother Robbie. I should bless him, Father, and anoint him. Lord, pray for uh, for Dad with the sermon, Father, that you put on his heart here on this first Sunday in 2024. Father, I ask that you would uh, bless him and anoint him, Lord, and fill him with the Holy Ghost, Father. I pray that uh, if there's anybody here that doesn't know you as the Lord and Savior of their life, Father, if there's anybody that's uh, grown cold on you, that's away from you, dear Lord, pray that today would be the day that they say yes to Jesus, Father. pray that uh, they'd start out 20. 24 with uh, the best possible way they could, Lord, and that's with, uh, with, with you, with Jesus in their heart, dear Lord. Lord, and uh, uh, Father, we just, uh, Lord, we love you, and we thank you for this church. Lord, thank you for everybody that came out this morning. Thank you for all of our uh, brothers and sisters, uh, FBC Clo, Father, and all of our brothers and sisters that are online watching, Lord, and everybody that's, uh, that's made an effort to be here, Lord. I ask that you would bless them, Father, for a special blessing. Lord, help us to, uh, to put away any distractions, Father, and help us to focus and dedicate this time to you. Lord, we just love you and praise you, Father, and want to pray for... Uh, our, our nation, Lord, pray that uh, America would uh, would turn our hearts back to you, Father, and pray that uh, uh, we'd see revival, Father. But if we can't see national revival, Father, because that's looking looking dim, Lord, we know that we can have revival in our hearts. Lord, we thank you for the revival that we felt in 2023, Father. Pray that it would continue in 2024, Father. I ask that you would uh, bless uh, uh, Randy Perry and Mary, Lord, as they come here in just a, a couple short weeks, Father. I ask that you would uh, uh, we, we want to pray for revival, Father, as it uh, comes down, Father. Help us to get out and invite people, and uh, for, Lord, pray that uh, we'd be to see this place filled, Father. I pray that uh, uh, that the, the church would be revived, Father. And number one and number two, pray that souls would be saved, Father. Lord, we just love you and we thank you. And we just praise you for this church. So we praise for everybody that's here, Lord. We want to pray for all the all the requests, Lord. Any that was uh, mentioned on the on the main list, Father, and any that's on the the, the list that goes out via Facebook that uh, that Mom uh, puts sins out every week, Father. And I pray that you'd. Uh, I bless, Father, all the unspoken requests, all the hands that were raised, Lord, and that weren't raised. Father, that you'd reach down and touch them, Father. Uh, Lord, if it be your will, Father, pray that you'd heal them, Lord, but we know that you won't heal everyone, Father, because we know that it's the world that we live in, Lord, that the, there's, it's, we're living in a sin-cursed world, Father, and that if we may not get physical healing, Lord, we know that, uh, that we're going to get spiritual healing, Father, if we know you and if you're the Lord and Savior of our lives. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for that, Father, and it's... Uh, Lord, just pray that uh, if there's anybody here that doesn't know you, dear Lord, that they'd come to know you before it's everlasting too late. Lord, we love you and thank you, Father. Nonetheless, we ask not our will, but that you will be done in the holy, sweet, precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, let me tell you, you all are going to get tired of me before I leave here. Uh, you know, uh, Brother Mike, you know, when you get our age, uh, I don't know if you're old as I am or not, but uh, Methuselah, but you're thankful for, the, for tomorrow, much less 2024. And, uh, but anyway, I, uh, and on my Bible reading, um, I've got an app on my phone, uh, and James Earl Jones is the narrator, and uh, he's absolutely fantastic, but he puts me to sleep, <laughs> and, I, and I wake up at midnight and have to turn him off, but, uh, but I'm trying. You've read the Bible through this year already. Uh, yeah, 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 he has. I was just unconscious when, he, when I heard it. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, folks, I... I don't sing songs that I don't believe. I believe every word of what I'm singing to you because if I didn't, I'd be like this preacher here. I'd be preaching the void. And uh, anyway, this is one of the songs that I love. A hill called Mount Calvary. And when t- 
time has surrendered and earth is no more, I still cling to the old rugged cross. I believe that this life with its great mysteries as surely will come heaven today oh but faith will conquer the darkness and death and will to my friends and I believe that the Christ who was slain on the cross has the power to change lives today couldn't do it either. I'm, I dropped it. I hope it's all right. Man, thank you, Rob. I still believe in the old rugged cross. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. I think about that song, the old rugged cross. One of these days, I'll trade it for a crown, and I'm going to hold on to it. If you're here this morning, and maybe you've forgotten this, and maybe you're visiting, and maybe you don't know this, or maybe it's your second time, somewhere second time people back. Let me say this to you. We believe and we promote old-time Christianity, amen? amen? Biblical, historical, genuine Christianity. We're not into this modern stuff. We're not into this contemporary movement. We're not into the liberal movement. We're not into the modern movement. We're into the Bible amen. movement, amen? So, uh, man, thank you for being here this morning. We got a great crowd. I think Major said we had 86 this morning, and uh, that reminds me, I need to tell you a couple things before I preach. Number one, it's getting pretty filled up in here. So that means we need to start tightening it up a little bit. And uh, by the time that revival comes, we're looking for big crowds on that revival. So we'll probably have another row of seats over here, an, an extra. So we want to start utilizing what we can, just kind of tighten up a little bit. And let's get in, everybody in we can. Amen? Amen? And then don't forget to utilize that parking spot over there. we, we got so many visitors and repeat visitors coming back. We need to leave this lot as much as we can for, the, for those folks and for the older folks and those of us that can go over there. Now, that doesn't mean for you folks that are hobbling along to go over there and park over there. <laughs> and if you, if, if you want to park somewhere, bring your wife up and drop her off at the door and then go over there. 
Uh, how many people do that? I do that. Todd does that. Yes, several people do that. And just drop them off and then go over there and the men can walk back. But we need to utilize that parking lot, especially as we get ready for the revival. We had great crowds last year when Randy was here. We're going to have great crowds this year. We already got great crowds. So, uh, But just, just plan on coming out. We try to make it as comfortable as we can for you. And we don't want it to be too comfortable. You go to sleep on it. A amen? But uh, anyhow, anyhow, I'm, I'm excited about the revival, and let's just pray and do what we can. All right, got your Bible, open up the book of Luke this morning, book of Luke chapter number 19, not 9, book of Luke chapter 9. My thought this morning is this thought, three daily assignments for the new year. Three daily assignments for the new year. I just sitting there thinking, I got so much to say that you need to pray that I can only say what needs to be said. I've got about three or four sermons I'd like to preach this morning, but if I did, my visitors won't come back. And my regulars won't come back. And my regulars will tell me about it. But so you pray that I can say exactly what needs to be said. But, you know, there are just so many things you want to say at the beginning of the year and, and, and set things off on the right tone. So let's just go with this this morning. I don't believe you can go wrong. You know, I've been in the ministry going on. Uh, the first lady has been telling me, she said, you got to change it now 46 years. And, uh, man, you know, I, I used to think you could preach the wrong sermon. If you're preaching the Bible, I'm not sure you can preach the wrong sermon. If it's the Word of God, it'll go out and do what it's supposed to do. Amen? Amen. Luke chapter number 9, verse number 18. Are you there? Luke chapter number 9, verse number 18. It'll be coming up on the big screen just in a minute. And it came to pass. How many people like the big screen? I love it, don't you? I wish I could see it. My eyes are so bad. I wish I could just turn around and read it right off there myself. Verse number 18 came to pass as he was alone praying. Now, who is the he? Jesus. His disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? They answered and said, John the Baptist. But some say Elias. That would have been Elijah. And others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said unto them, But whom say ye? that I am. Peter answering said, the Christ of God. Amen. Peter nailed it. Amen. I mean, Peter nailed the answer. The Christ of God, the Christ means the anointed of God, the only begotten Son of God. I was doing a little bit of, of reviewing and looking at Bible versions and stuff this week, and John 3.16 and many new Bible versions does not have the only begotten Son of God. Right. It has the Son of God. Right. Well, I tell you what, He's not just the Son of God. He is the only begotten Son of God. Amen. Never been one like Him. Will never be one like Him. He is God in the flesh. Amen? Amen. I'm a Son of God. Right. And if you've been saved, you're a Son of God. Amen. Let's make sure we get it right. Amen? Amen? Verse number 20, He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying, Now listen to what he said. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, notice that, he said to them all, If any man will come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Amen. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage to be gained the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Boy, that's a good question to end with, isn't it? I hope as we started this new year and seven days into the new year that one of your goals, one of your resolutions, one of your decisions is that you want to be a better Christian this year than you were last year. That ought to be the goal of every one of us, that we want to be a better Christian every year. And if we're going to do that, there's some things we must do. 
And you know, it's so easy. I don't know about you, but it's so easy to waste time. Uh, you, do you ever waste time? I'll tell you one thing that'll waste your time would be this thing right here. I mean, it'll, well, you, can sit, you can sit and scroll on that. Isn't it amazing? Kathy and I sit and we watch TV and we can't stay awake long enough to watch a movie or a show. And we go get in the bed and we can't go to sleep. And we get on our phone, start scrolling on the phone, we're up for an hour or two. Do you do that? How many other people do that? Nobody. I'm the only person that does that. Don't lie to me. Good night. Don't make me feel like I'm the oddball. I was up, I won't tell you what I was doing at 1 o'clock this morning. It wasn't good for my diet, I can tell you that. I'd been asleep and drowsy around, and laid on the couch, slept around all day, got in the bed and got the big eye. But there are so many things in life that I found out that can just gobble your time up. They're time wasters. They're time robbers. And we get involved in so many things that we're not careful, things that have no eternal value, things that have no spiritual value. They may not be really bad things, but they may be secondary things, and they may not be eternal things that we really ought to spend more time with. There's nothing wrong with relaxing. I hope not. I like to do it. There's nothing wrong with taking a nap. I like to do it. There's nothing wrong with leisure. I like having leisure. There's nothing wrong with just going fishing. I, I like to fish. There's nothing wrong with going shopping. I, I, I even like to shop, believe it or not. But you know, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we allow those things to take the precious time away that we ought to be devoting to Jesus. Amen? And I don't know about you, but I want to be involved in 24 in more spiritual things that have more eternal value where that God can use me better. Amen? Amen. Satan's deceptive. He'll take your time. And he'll get you involved in anything. Any, listen, hearing about it in a few hours, it's going to be time to come back to church. And probably most of you already have your reason and excuse why you can't come back. You've already, it's not that you're going to decide. You've already decided. Well, I can't go back again. He's asked us to come back out on Tuesday morning. He's asked us to come back out on Wednesday night. He's got a revival scheduled up here in a few weeks, and he wants me to be here every night. Now he's got a Bible reading plan. He wants me to read the Bible every day. What's wrong with that guy? I'm just trying to help you be the best Christian that you can be. Amen. Satan's trying to deceive you and cause you not to be a good Christian. He doesn't want you to be a good Christian. He doesn't want you to put time in the Bible. He doesn't want you to put time in the Word of God. He doesn't want you to put time in the church house. He doesn't want you to put time into prayer. He would rather you do anything Amen. but that. Amen? Yeah. Now, before we get too far into the sermon, let me say, while you're sitting there running all these excuses through your mind, that we all have the same amount of hours every day. Amen. Because I'm the pastor, that doesn't mean I get 36 hours a day. I know, I don't get 36 hours, I get 24 hours a day. I have to decide what to do in those 24 hours. You say, I have time to go to church, then, you're, you're, then your time's messed up. You need somebody to help you with some time management. I don't have time to read my Bible, then you, 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 you're really in trouble, amen? If you're a Christian, you don't have time to go to church and time to read your Bible and time to pray, you need some help. Amen. You, if, you, if you're putting other things before that, you're already messed up, Amen. We're too busy for eternal things, but we sure get involved with secondary things. Amen. Don't allow secondary things to become primary things. Amen. Amen? As we look into these scriptures in chapter number 9, it's loaded, man. Chapter 9 is loaded with some good things. Let me give you some things that were in chapter 9. I just went back and, and looked at chapter 9 and made some notes about chapter 9. Jesus took his 12 apostles and gave them power over disease and over devils. Think about that. Those 12 men that he had chosen, he pulled them in and gave them power over disease and over devil. Then he sent them out to preach. Amen. I tell you what, we need, we need more preaching today. Amen. Thank you for the two amens. One of those was from my wife. <laughs> we need more preaching today. Amen. I, know, I know you, I'm not talking about today on today on Sunday. 
You're afraid to say that, afraid that, you know, those, those women, some of these women agged me on, on on New Year's Eve, and I preached about an hour, and they said, they just keep going and keep going and keep going. They just kept agging me on. And I like an old Mally engine. I got fired up, and I wanted to just keep going on. And some of you sitting there in your rear and saying, my rear can't take any more, preacher. Hold back a little bit. But he gave them power over devils and, and disease, and then he sent them out to preach. And then we have a great story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Wow, well, think about that. And then in verse number 18, Jesus goes for his prayer time. Yeah. Let me say that to you again. Jesus goes for his prayer time. I'm going to say to you, if Jesus needed a prayer time, you and I need a prayer time. Amen. If Jesus needed to pray to the Father in heaven, you and I need to pray to the Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. If Jesus took time to pray, I think we should be too. Amen. And as he was praying, Jesus began to ask some questions. He's praying to the Father, and the disciples were close by, and he turns around and says, hey, boys, let me ask you a question. What's the word on the street out there? Well, who are people saying that I am? And you know what you know what they said? You know, man, they said, well, you know, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah, one of these other prophets that's risen from the dead. And Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am? Can I say to you, it doesn't matter what everybody else says about right. Jesus. Amen. You know, we've got a lot of people not saved because they're worrying about what somebody else feels about or thinks about Jesus. Right. There's only one person that's going to determine what you do with your soul, and that's you. Amen. And man, if we worry about whatever, if you worry about whatever Tom, Dick, and Harry says out there, you never will get saved. Right. Well, my wife doesn't want me saved. My husband doesn't want me saved. My mom, I've had mom and dads not want their children saved. The people that you work with, they don't want to be saved. Listen, if you listen to that, you'll never get saved. Amen. You'll die and go to hell. Jesus said, no, listen, don't worry about what everybody else says. I'm going to ask you, what, who do you say that I am? Amen. By the way, that'd be a good question to you this morning. Who, do you, who is Jesus to you? Is he just a man? Is he, just, is he the Son of God? Or is he your Savior? Amen. And Peter said, the heart, the Christ of God. Amen. Really. Really, and there's only one opinion that matters, and it's your opinion, what you think about Jesus Christ. Amen? Then in verse number 22, Jesus began to share with them for the first time what his future held. Wow, this had to be eye-opening. This had to be amazing for them to sit and listen to this. These guys had sold their businesses and gotten rid of their businesses. They'd given up their jobs. They had forsaken everything and were following Jesus because they thought, hey, He's going to take back over the empire, the Roman Empire, and he's going to become the ruler of the world. Well, he is, just not in their lifetime. And Jesus began to talk to them and tell them what was going to happen. Listen to what, what he said in verse number 21. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain, and be raised the third day. I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it. That's not, what, that's not what a lot of health and wealth prosperity preachers are preaching today. They, they tell you you don't have to suffer. They tell you you don't have to be without money. They tell you you don't have to have bad health. They tell you you never lose your job. You just send your money to me, and I'll make sure we're praying. Well, listen, how about them sending their money to me? Well, why does it have to always be going that way? That's, that's hogwash right out of the pits of hell. Amen. Jesus began to tell those disciples, they'd have had, they would have had that health and wealth mentality if they weren't careful if Jesus hadn't been there. And Jesus said, listen, I, I've got to suffer. That's something we want to talk about. We want to suffer and be rejected. Nobody wants to be rejected. And then I'm going to be slain and I'll raise again the third day. This was the first time they had ever heard this. Everybody in here probably knows that. From the time I was a child, my mom and daddy in Sunday school, vacation Bible school in the church, preachers and teachers and Sunday school teachers would tell about Jesus coming to earth, born of a virgin, living a sinless life, dying on the cross at Calvary, raising again the third day. Man, I feel like I was blessed to know that. These guys had never heard this before in their life. This was brand new information to them. Jesus, the Son of God, talking about suffering. 
Talking about being rejected. How in the world can anybody reject the Son of God? The, the person, the, the God who created everything that there is to create. Amen. Being slain, I'm going to be killed. And then on the third day I'm going to rise again. Wow, those words. I, I, have you ever heard something that just, just almost just makes your stomach do a flip-flop? I bet your stomach's just, just, just almost got sick and they thought, we've given our whole lives up to follow you. And you're talking about dying and suffering and being rejected? The one who talked to them and, and said, follow me, and now they're, they're, they're thinking my dreams, my career, my ambitions, everything I want, the tubes, they didn't understand. And then in verse number 23, Jesus tells them what they must do to be a follower. This is where I'm going to preach from this morning. This is something that nobody likes to hear. But on the first Sunday of 2020, 24, almost said 23. This is something we all need to hear. Amen. Verse number 23, he gives them their assignment. You've got an assignment. I'm giving you an assignment today right out of the Word of God. It's a daily assignment. It's not a weekly assignment or a monthly assignment or once a year assignment. If you're a child of God, it's a daily assignment. Amen. Listen to what he said, verse number 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Amen. Wow. Wow. You say, well, that was good for them. No, he said, of any man. He said, of any man. You can put your name right there. Let me read it. If Mike Worf will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If the major will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If Rob Baker will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If Bill Floyd will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If Billy Brown will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If Eddie will... Follow me and come after me. Let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. It's, it's everybody. Everybody's name goes in that blank, in that spot, where any is. If any will follow me and come after me. Amen. Amen. He gave us three things. Jesus said every Christian must do if we're going to follow him, and especially here in 2024. Deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Can I tell you those three things are easy to say? You know, Jesus, the Bible says a lot of things easy to say and easy to read, but they're hard to do. First, let me just give you some things that Jesus didn't say. Jesus didn't say some things that Jesus didn't say. He didn't say we have to become a Jew to follow him. He didn't say you have to go to seminary and have four years of, of seminary training to be able to follow me. He didn't say you got to get up and speak before a congregation to be able to come after him and follow him. He didn't say you had to have a high school diploma or college degree or enough degrees after your name and you look like a thermometer. He didn't say that. He didn't say you had to be rich to come after me and follow me. He didn't say you had to be a certain color to come after me and follow me. He didn't say you had to even be really smart. He didn't say your IQ has to be on this level to come after me and follow me. He certainly didn't say you have to be beautiful or handsome to come after me and follow me. He didn't say you have to be strong to come after me and follow me. He didn't say you have to be young to come after me and follow me. He didn't say you have to be old to come after me and follow me. He didn't even say you have to be able to read, write, or be able to tell colors to come after me and follow me. He didn't say you had to spend five years, 10 years, 15 years on a mission field and then come follow me. No, listen to Jesus. didn't say any of those things. But he did say there are three things you must do. Amen. These are not optional. These are, you say, well, I'm gonna, I don't want them. Well, they're not optional. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to be a person who really follows Jesus? Amen. I, I hope I'm speaking to people. We had 86 people in here this morning. I hope I'm talking to people that have a desire that want to be the very best they can be for Jesus. But I'm going to tell you something. I think you can look around, look around the church, our church, 
Look around the churches, look around the religious world out there. Not everybody's taking these three things very seriously. Amen. I mean, they, listen, they're not doing it. They're not, they're not doing it. We have to decide to do that. Let me remind you, there are consequences Amen. for not making these choices. Amen? Let's talk about these three things today, and then we'll go home. Just for a little bit. Number one, he said, you got to deny himself. Amen. You say, what does it mean to deny himself? It means we have to say no to some things. Yes. We have to be willing to put our self, our plans, our goals, our outlooks, our dreams on a back burner and put him on the front burner. Amen. Saying, no to, saying no to ourself is something that goes against the grain of every human being. There's something when Adam and Eve fell and the sin nature come along and everybody that's been born had been born with a sin nature, it makes you selfish and makes you want to do more for yourself than you do for anybody else. You want to put yourself on the front burner as a Christian. As a Christian. I don't, it's, not, it's not an option. It's not a choice. If I want to be a follower of Jesus and come after him, I must deny myself. Amen. You say, what does that mean? It means I've got to put Jesus number one. If Jesus, if Jesus, listen, if Jesus hasn't been number one in your life, you need to start today and make him number one. Amen. Amen. He wants to be the Lord and master of our lives. You see, there's a, throne, there's, a, there's a little spot in everybody's heart. There's a little throne in your heart today, and somebody's on that throne. It's either self or the Savior. And I can tell you by looking at most of the world, I can tell you who's on the throne in most people's lives. It's self. Self is sitting up there high and mighty, and he's crowned big and tall, and people say, oh, it's my life. I'm going to do what I want. You've got that choice. But there's also an eternity out there. Amen. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun out there. And I would encourage you today to put Jesus first and foremost in your life. Amen? Amen. You say, what's it mean to put Jesus first? It means put his will first. We all right here probably have different things and different wills that we want to do in our life, but if you want to be what God wants you to be, you've got to do what he wants you to do. His plan may be different than what your plan is. His plan may, you may have a plan to go do all these other things, and Jesus may say, no, this is your will for your life. You say, well, you're just talking to you and the major and preachers and people. like No, I'm talking to any man. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Well, we got to we got we got to get in in tune with His will. Yeah. We got to get in tune with His word. We got a lot of people say they follow Jesus, but they, they, <laughs> their life sure doesn't back it up. They're not doing what the book says. We got churches and denominations not doing what the book says. Man, listen. Then we got to do what His work is. You know, the greatest work you can ever do is working for the Master. I mean, he, he can bless you in ways that you could never even imagine. I tell you what I found out in my years serving the Lord and been in the ministry. People want a convenient way. They want an easy way. Was it, was it David Livingston, the, the missionary, who was on a journey, and I forget where he was, and, and was going over the rocky roads and cliffs and hills, and, and somebody sent him a message. He said, send us, a, send us an easy way to get to where you are. And he said, there is no easy way. Being a Christian takes a, a lot of dedication and determination. You've got to be willing to put him first. I don't know if you know this or not, but we are living in a day and age when we're ob obsessed with self. Scroll through Facebook today and see how many people have pictures of themselves on their front page. I'm not, I'm not against you having a picture of yourself on your page, but I do wonder when I see people every day have to change the profile picture, and every day they take pictures of themselves and put on there every day. Right. There ain't nobody in the world wants to see you every day like that. Take a picture of your dog or your cat or your, your dinner or, or, or the, the sun. Eddie put the sunset on there, the sunrise of the morning. Man, wasn't that beautiful? Amen. I, mean, man, I mean, listen, nobody wants to see your old ugly face on there every day. Amen. We're obsessed with self. self we didn't, when I was growing up, we didn't know what a selfie was. Now you got a selfie stick. 
So you can put your camera on there. I've got one. Hold it out there where you get a picture of everybody. We've got selfie sticks. We're selfies, man. We did, we did, we, you say, I don't, I don't know about that. We're well, listen to people talk. You know who most people talk about? Self. I don't know about you, but I hate to talk to people, and that's all they can talk about is self. They never talk about Jesus. They never talk about their, their spouse. They never talk about their mom and dad. They never talk about their kids, their grand. You know who they talk about? Self. Wow. Look at social media, and that's all you can see. Amen? Amen. To deny self means to put God first and foremost in your life. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first, yes. not seek ye second or third or when it's convenient or when you feel like it. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. Unfortunately, most of what we hear from preachers and, and leaders and politicians, are, it's all about me. Do you, you believe that? Listen to Randy Perry when Randy Perry comes. I doubt if Randy Perry would give you a rundown of everything he's done over the last year. And all the places he's done, all the people he's seen, all the people. No, he's going to preach to you about Jesus. Amen. When, when a preacher gets up, I, I, this, I despise this from a preacher. I've been here. And I've done this. And I built this. And I'm going to do this. And there's a place and a time to say that. But too many preachers, that's all they ever talk about is what I've done. They, 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 they have definitely not, not denied, denied self. What about politicians? <laughs> now we got, one, we got one of the biggest out there running around right now. And all he can talk about is himself. And all you got to do is every speech almost sounds the same. What I've done, now you know what I'm talking about. Now I'm talking about Mr. Trump. His ego is bigger than he, I don't know if he can get through that door back there. That, that, that concerns me a little bit. I just have to be honest with you. Of course, it concerns me that Joe can't remember anything to tell what he did. <laughs> that concerns me, too. By the way, just let me say so you won't feel bad. All politicians bother me. Amen. I'm concerned about all of them. Amen. Because I'm not really sure any of them really have, they, they, they really have my best interest at heart. It's what I can do, what I can get, what I can give, or what I can do, and what I can make myself. I, we need to be careful about that. Let me just warn you today, I should have put this in my sermon the other night why it was so hot. You need to be careful about 2024 because we're going to see these, po these political people are going to do more to divide us than anything ever has in, in, in the history of America. It's going to be one of the most upcoming, important elections that we're ever going to face. And we're going to be so divided by the time we get there, I don't even know if we'll be able to get there or not. Right. My hope does not lie. I'm, I know this is going to shock some of you. And you can get mad if you do. You can get mad. I don't care if you get mad or not. My hope's not in Donald Trump. My hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible, say, the Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation, not the Republican Party or not the Democrat Party or not the Independent Party or not any other party. Righteousness exalts a nation. Now, I know that'll rub some of you raw, and that'll be all right. But I'm just telling you the God's honest truth. Amen? Amen. Listen to their speeches. Wow. Righteousness exalts a nation. Amen. I love hearing people talk about Jesus. Amen. If America is going to be saved and going to be changed, it's going to be because of Jesus. I, you, wanna, you know what I say? What I vote for in 2024? Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's put him on the ballot. And let's run him big and tall and loud and proud. Say, hey, you know what America needs? They need Jesus in their life. Amen. I tell you what a lot of Christians need. They need Jesus in their life. Amen. And if you quit being so fighting over politics and fight over the principles of the Word of God, you'd be better off. Amen. 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 Write him right in. Amen. We're so self-centered we find it difficult to talk about anything else. Yes, that's what Jesus, Jesus looked to his disciples and said, if, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. He's the master, we're the servants. 
He's the potter with the clay. Who am I to tell Jesus what to do? Jesus wanted to send me to the deepest, darkest parts of the, of the third world country. Over Who am I to say, no, I'm not going to go? Amen. You say, well, I'd get close to Jesus, but I'm afraid he'd send me somewhere. Yeah, he'd probably send you to church more often. Amen. He'd probably say, if you really love me, you'd come to church a little bit more often. Amen. Jim Elliott, the famous missionary who died, said this. He said, God always gives the best to those who leave the choice to him. I tell you what you ought to do this morning, and that you won't do it. I'm just blowing hot air. When the altar calls given, everybody ought to get around somewhere around, move and get out in the aisle, get somewhere, Amen. and say, God, I'm going to leave the choices in 2024 to you. I'm tired of driving the car. I'm try, tired of trying to be the boss of my own life. I'm, trying to, I'm tired of trying to do everything on my own. I need you to be in control. Amen. Then number two, he said, not only deny himself, he said, take up your cross daily. Wow, we hear, we hear the word cross. We, we made the cross a, a beautiful thing today. Right. You know what? We got them in churches. I'm looking around. We, do we have them in churches? We got one on the flagpole. We got, oh, we got one right here. We, sometimes they're on the building. Sometimes they're on the walls. Sometimes, you know, we've got them on Bible covers. We've got them on keychains. We've got them on, on emblems on our car. I've even got them on my socks. <laughs> we made the cross a thing of beauty today. Can I tell you what the disciples thought when Jesus told them about taking up your cross daily? You know what the cross was an instrument of? Death. You know what they saw? You know what, you know what picture went through their mind? They didn't think about Bible covers with a cross on it. I've had a couple of those little uh, olive wood crosses, you know, take it and, and carry it in your pocket, and, you know, and rub on that. I, li I like that. I love the cross. We, but Rob just said, I love the cross. Amen. But it's not a thing of beauty. Right. The cross represents death. And Jesus, I tell you what you need to do. You need to deny yourself and take up your cross daily. You say, I, I got to live with my husband, man. I'm bearing my cross every day. That's not your cross. Well, you ain't live with my wife and have to listen to her mouth and her gripping and complaining. That's not your cross to bear. Well, my health's not good. That's not your cross to bear. You know what the disciples thought of when Jesus said, take up your cross? You know what they thought? They thought about the people that they'd seen marching through the streets of Jerusalem. And they say that they couldn't carry the whole cross because it was so heavy. And they take the cross member part of it and tie it onto their back and carry their cross. And it was a one-way trip out of town. Because they weren't coming back. It meant death. You know what Jesus said? Boys, take up your cross daily. We get saved. But then daily we need to take up our cross. I preached a sermon one time, the hardest death to die. That was before COVID. And everybody dying on a ventilator and dying alone, all that stuff. But I could still work it in, I think. I think the hardest death to die is a death to self. We don't want to kill ourselves. And I'm not talking about suicide. Don't misunderstand. I'm, I'm talking about dying to some things of the world. Being, be, be, just be willing to be a sacrifice for Jesus. Amen. You know, we've got all over the world people are dying for their faith. It may come right here before we get out of here. And Jesus, I tell you what you need to do. You, really want, you, really, you, want, you want to come and follow me? Deny yourself. Take up your cross daily. Amen. Wow. Well, think about that. I mean, the disciples, man, the, the, the image of the cross in their mind. It was horrible. It was ugly. It was nasty. It was brutal. It was permanent. And Jesus said, take up your cross daily. I, 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 I just, nobody, anybody got a hangman's noose 
around their neck or the pocket and keychain? You got a guillotine on your keychain? No, you don't have that. You got an electric chair and you in, carry around in your pocket? No. Well, that's what the that's exactly what the cross meant to these guys. It meant death. It represents death. Paul said, "I die daily." Can I tell you, if you're going to be what God wants you to be in 2024, you got to die daily. Because every day, listen, you say, man, I've been saved, and I've given my life to the Lord. But you know what? That old flesh wants to resurrect. Amen. It wants to come back every day and do what it wants to do. Yeah. And to be what God wants you to be, be a follower of Jesus, you've got to be one to put that on the cross and say, I'm going to give that to Jesus and die to self. Dying to self's hard, amen? I mean, it's, it's hard today to die to self. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm crucified. When you get saved, you're supposed to be crucified with Jesus. Amen. You're supposed to be dead to the things. that We're supposed to be dead to these sin. We've got, so, we, we, we've got so much sinful behavior in the church, it's pitiful. Can I just go ahead and say this on the first Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Visitors, Major, they may not ever come back. I tell you what, if this runs you off, you ain't going to make it here long anyhow. Get you a flyer on the way out because you won't be back. There ain't no place in the life of a Christian to be drinking. Amen. Now, you can get mad about that. You say, I ain't go uptown, I ain't go to other church, I ain't go, you, you, hey, look, you, go, you, you go to church, hey, listen, they'll tell you it's all right to be a fornicator. They'll tell you it's all right to be a part of the alphabet club. They'll tell you to get on the trans train and ride down. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. This has no place in the life of a child of God. Amen. Now, if that bothers you, you if that bothers you, hold on. It'll get a lot worse. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, take up your cross daily. Amen. It's not a one-time thing. Dying to self's not a one-time thing. You say, well, preacher, I came to altar last year. You ought to come back again and visit again every now and then. Amen. I bet you the truth, I bet you we took time. I bet you every one of us got something we need to die to today. Amen. Cussing. God help us. I see stuff some of y'all put on your Facebook. You need to check your stuff before you put it on there. I'm just telling you, you put stuff on there. Well, I'm just reposting. That's like that's like people just 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 re re, re quote somebody and they use the cuss words. Man, I ain't gonna use somebody's cuss words. Amen. Somebody cuss me out. I ain't going to go tell Rob. Say Rob or something. Somebody said you blankety blank blank blank. No, I'm not going to use those words. Amen. I'm not going to do it. Amen. I'm gonna let my time. Listen, my tongue needs to be killed out to the things of the flesh. Amen. My taste buds need to be killed out and be put on the cross. Right. My hands need to be put on the cross. My eyes need to be put on the cross. My feet need to be put on the cross. There are just absolutely some places and things you ought not go and you ought not do as a child of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, you need, I'll tell you what you want to do, boys. He said, you want to follow me? Everybody wants to follow Jesus. Amen. Nobody got upset with Jesus when he was doing the miracles. Nobody got upset when he was raising the dead. Nobody got upset when he was just giving them food and just blessing them all over, walking in and man, everybody. But nobody got upset about that. But when Jesus got down to where the rubber meant to run, said, this is the way you must live, people got mad. And they get mad at me. I keep trying to tell the first lady, how huh, you married to me? You ought to be used to people being mad at me. It's been a lifelong journey for us. We've been battling for 45, 46 years, and we got people today still mad. We come to Okeechobee, try to hide out, and try to make friends with everybody, and we just got people in Okeechobee mad at us. <laughs> I got people in our own church upset with us. Well, I'm sorry. I'm going to die. I'm going to die after the things of the world. Amen? Amen. I'm going to take up my cross daily. Every day when you pray and you say, boy, there's some things. I, when, you, when, you start to, when you start to pop the top on that, on that, on that tab, I said, no, sir, I'm not going to do it. You don't need it. Amen. You start to say, you 
you need to stop saying, that's not what Jesus would want me to do. Amen. You cut somebody off in traffic, you cut off, you go, hey, I better not do that. I'm just being honest with you. That's what it means, dying, dying daily. Dying, you say, well, I've got problems. Well, listen, I'm not talking about having problems. I'm talking about people who do it consistently. I'm talking about people who don't even care. My buddy, can I, where's Big D? Crowd's so big I can't find you. <laughs> big D come to me Wednesday night. Now, you've got to understand, but he blessed my heart Wednesday night. He come and grab me right around the jaw. I didn't know he was going to kiss me right on the lips, and I scared me. <laughs> scared me for a minute. I thought, good night, but I love you, but I don't love you that much. He grabbed me, grabbed me right around my big old fat jaws. And he said, I want you to know something. He said, if I have to give up fishing to follow Jesus, I'll give it up. Amen. That's, the guy, that's the guy who's named after fish. That's the guy who fishes religiously. Did you fish yesterday? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Rob didn't even fish yesterday. <laughs> Nobody went out and fished yesterday. But Dennis went and fished yesterday. You know what I told Dennis? I said, you don't have to give up fishing. Amen. God just wants you to know that you're willing Amen. to do it. Right. May I ask you a question? Are you willing to give up some things for Jesus? Amen. He might not ever ask you to do it. But I can tell you this, that thing you say, I'm not going to give up, right. that'll be the one thing he'll drill on you for. Right. When you say, I ain't going to do it, he'll just keep on and on and on and on and on until you grab me around my fat jaws, I'm willing to give it up. That's what Jesus wants. He wants you to be willing. Amen. You might not have to do it, but would you do it? If he asked you to come back tonight at 6 o'clock, would you do it? If he asked you to come to revival, would you do it? If he asked you to be faithful to him, would you do it? He just wants to be number one, amen? Wow, wow. This, then I'm going to finish with this. i got to finish. Number three. I could preach on that all day. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Amen. That follow me is not a suggestion, right. by the way. It's a command. Right. You don't just follow on Sunday. You know, what's wrong with you know what's wrong with most people in America? People go to church on Sunday, and on Monday they're living like the devil again. And they're, on the, they're on the job telling dirty jokes and laughing and, 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 and vulgar stuff and pornography and alphabet stuff and all that, all that old sickening stuff out there. And, and if somebody stands on, if somebody on the corner that never says anything. And they go, I thought they were Christian. You know you might be the only Bible that some people ever read. And it's not just important that it's what it says on the cover. It's what's down on the inside. You can say on the cover, you, you can wear your hat, get your Freedom Baptist hat. Some of you hope you don't wear it. Some of you need to take your Jesus first hat and put it back for a while. Don't be wearing that out in public. You need to put Jesus first and foremost and follow him. Follow him? You say, how long do I have to follow? Here's where we get messed up. People say, I want to get saved. I want to get, you get saved from hell. But you, listen, when you get saved from hell, then you begin to follow Jesus. And you don't follow him for six months. You don't follow him until the next time you get your check or next time you go out and do this. You don't follow, you follow him until you die. Amen. 
or till he comes by. I preach this Wednesday night. I gotta, I'm going to get down out of here for just a minute. I ask a question Wednesday night. Have you ever been out of the will of God? My buddy right there, visitors, just, he, the first one I saw shaking his head. Guess what? Yeah. So have I. You ever been out of the will of God? Yeah. 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 You ever been out of the will of God? What did you say Wednesday night? Miserable. Miserable. You know how you stay in the will of God? Follow him. Where he leads, I will follow. You say, I don't know if I want to go that route. Well, if you want, listen, if you want to be the Christian God wants you to be, that's what you got to do. And it's not just following today. Well, okay, preacher, I'm going to follow him. No, no, it's a lifetime decision. I bet you there's some people right here this morning, I bet you, that used to follow Jesus, that you're not following him like you used to be. I'm just going to just be very honest with you. You're not following like you used to be. One time you were excited. You were red hot for Jesus. You were going to church, man. You were reading your Bible. You were praying. You said, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get back. Well, listen, it's only a step back. Come on home. Jesus loves you. I tell you what, Rob, come up here for a minute. I love Rob Baker. I hate to use people in a sermon because I always hate it to be used. This is what Jesus will do to you. Come on, son, let's go. Let's go. Huh? Isn't that what Jesus will do with you? He's not going to say, he's not going to say, no, no, no. Rob, I don't want you around me. You get away from me. You know what Jesus did? He put his arm around and said, come on, I'll go with you. I'm going to go with you, Rob, and I'm going to help you all the way. But that's what Jesus will do to you. He loves us. Why in the world on the first Sunday of 2024 would we stay away from the Lord? Why would we get off somewhere in the corner and act like, well, I don't want to follow him? You know that somewhere down the road you're going to have to follow him. Amen. You ever get to heaven, you're going to have to do it. Amen. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Amen. I tell you what I found out, I'm, I'm, I'm probably like, I'm probably like one of the most ignorant people in here. But I tell you what I found out. Life is a whole lot better following Jesus. Amen. Good thing Jesus can't be killed or some of you would have already killed him. You're trying to drive him around, haul him around, take him places. He not, listen, he didn't want to be in those places. He wants you to follow him. He doesn't want to follow you. He wants you to follow him. Lord, thank you today for this challenge to start out the year 2024. And Lord, I pray that I'll just be honest this morning and say, I want to follow you more. I want to die daily. I want to deny myself more in 24 than maybe any other time of my life. And Lord, I'm asking you today to do that in our church, in our people. Thank you for a great crowd. Some of them probably never come back after hearing this today. They'll get mad. They'll get angry. They'll get upset. And they say, I don't want to hear that. Well, it's just the truth. I love them, and I want to tell them the truth. Amen. And Lord, I pray today that you'll help us, Lord, to be what you want us to be. And, Lord, I thank you for every person's here today. Before I say amen, I'm going to ask you a question. How many people, to be honest, slip their hand up? You don't have to say anything. I'm not going to come to you. But by that, you say, Preacher, I know I'm saved and on my way to heaven. Can you raise up big and high? Can you do that? God bless you. Thank you so much. Everybody didn't raise their hand. You could have. I would have never known. But you had enough honesty and integrity and enough courage that you didn't raise your hand because you know you're not right with the Lord today. Can I ask you to do something? I won't come to you. I won't embarrass you. Nobody looking around. I'm looking. 
Would you have enough courage to slip your hand up now and say, Preacher, I need to get right with Jesus. I need to be saved. This needs to be the day, the year that I get right with Jesus. Can you do that? Can anybody do that? Have that much courage? That much courage? Well, thank you so much. If you're here today and you've never been saved, pray this prayer, something like it. Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. And I know I cannot save myself. But today, the best I know how, I'm asking Jesus to save me and come into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and sing. Some of you got some work to do today. I've done my job. Now you do yours. Some of you ought to get saved. Some of you ought to come on back home. Some of you ought to come and pray. What will you do today, right now? Your decision. Will you do it? Will you do it? You got some decisions you need to make? Thank you, Miss Jean. Thank you, Miss Ruth. I hope you'll come back. I hope if you're not right, not saved, you'll get right before it's too late. Thank you for coming out. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for the message that we've heard. May we truly follow you in 2024. Lord, we ask your blessings upon each one here this morning. Give them safe travel to their homes. Bring them back safely tonight, Lord. We're going to have another meeting tonight. And Lord, thank you for your many blessings of life. God bless. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Well, I started climbing up this mountain a few years ago. Steps get tired of all this road, but I'm gonna live in Canaan land one glorious day. I'm moving out of this valley.
Singing my song. 